Oh, he's gonna throw a barrel at me. <laughs> That's not gonna work, but... Oh, okay. Uh, not that one. Oh, I'm gonna do a trick. 1080. Look out. There it goes. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Monk. Hey, guys. It's Adam E.K. Swimming Bird, and welcome to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch. This is part five, so if you missed any episodes so far, please catch up with the links down in the description. Last time, I did get punched by a giant rock man, but I also lived to tell the tale. So today, we're gonna take on the last two trials of the Great Plateau, get some new runes, and earn ourselves a paraglider at long last. And there's a bunch of ways we can go, as is the case with this game. There's some bacoblins up there, and I did spot a Koric puzzle last episode, but we can save those for later. I can always come back and do that another time. I wanna focus on getting to the shrines, and start by taking out this camp here, which we can't actually get up to just yet. So they've got a blue leader who's gonna be kinda of tough, I'm sure. We got a spear squad here sniffing the ground, looking for stuff to eat and licking it. Ugh. And uh, an archer, okay. So we gotta watch out if he sounds the horn. Now I could use a bunch of arrows and try to just take those guys out from a distance, but they're gonna drop down here and chase after me anyways, so I'm gonna lay some traps and make this interesting. There we go, I hit it by <laughs> behind the cooking pot, and we can take out these ropes even to make a link accessible base. There we go. And we can even get a horse up there if we really want it. If we could get a horse on the plateau, I could trot up that ramp and take him out with a gallop. I can't wait to get a horse, but actually there is a way to get a horse. I forgot. If you want to see a horse on the plateau, let me know. We'll have one soon either way. There we go, okay. So these guys have wooden spears and they just might try to light them on fire to do some extra damage, but those bombs are gonna help out. There we go, took his leader out and he extinguished his own flame. We gotta be careful though, cause he's spinning around. Okay, that's my cue. Let's take him out and look out. Jeez, he snuck up on me there. All right, come on, buddy. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna try on me? Should pro probably use a spear against him because then we could get some nice range. Spears are good for breaking through shields. They just don't do too much damage. And the wooden ones, of course, don't last very long. But I'm gonna try it on this guy. We have our throwing spear as well. But yeah, we can poke through his shield and uh, do that pretty easily. Grab some arrows from the archer here. I just gotta be careful because he has a nice looking sword that I want for myself. Here we go. We can even throw this up at that guy if we want to get rid of it. <laughs> and we're gonna try a club on him. Ooh, jeez, that was close. Come here, buddy. Come on. Don't do your crazy jump attacks on me. Ooh. Try to get one more flurry rush to take him out. Come on, buddy. Ooh. There we go. A couple more hits. Ooh, jeez, okay, whoa. He hits like a rock. Literally, he hits like the stone talus <laughs> mini boss that we just, he hit the same amount of damage. Ah, okay, one more good hit on him and we'll have him. There we go, that'll finish him off. One hit was all we needed and now I stole his sword, ha ha. So soldier's broadsword, that's gonna be, yeah, no wonder he did so much damage, jeez. That thing hits hard and I'm gonna steal his shield as well, because it is better than most of the other ones I have. His fang is rolling down the hill. A little morbid. Did we take that archer out, or did he, where did he go? He might have fallen off into the frigid water, unfortunately, so we might not get his arrows, but that's okay. I got plenty of them. I hit him with a spear, now that I just remembered. So there's a bunch of peppers here, because we are getting close to the snow. And we'll talk a little bit about temperature and whatnot as we open up these chests and get the spoils of our victory. So in this game, there is hot and cold temperatures that will do damage to you if they're too extreme and you're in them without the right type of clothing or food that gives you protection against those elements. And it's actually a uh, pretty, pretty brutal damage over time where you don't want to do that. You're going to be eating a ton of food if you don't have the right setup to go into an area. Now, if you look at the bottom right, there's that temperature gauge and if we go close to the fire, you can see it does warm us up. We could even take a torch with us, and we wouldn't even need this warm doublet that we're wearing to go into the snowy area. But because we have it, we did the quest with the old man at his cabin to give him his favorite dish. We've got it already. If you don't have the warm doublet at this point, there is a, a place 
that you can get it at that we'll go up to. But at this point, you, you should at least, you know, have some peppers, have some food that will help you in here. If I did take this shirt off, you can see on that temperature meter, the cold goes up. So yeah, if we're wearing it, it reduces the, uh, the amount of cold, you know, the cold that we have to get to to be shivering is a uh, more extreme thing, but <laughs> he also doesn't look so happy when we take it off. So let's keep that on. We got some stall cobbling to deal with. I don't want to use my torch on those. That's a waste. Even though they don't, they only take one good hit, and then you can smack their heads and get rid of them. All right, grab. Oh wait, is there? An, oh, there's another one. Hey, you, get out of here. We'll just have his head go into the river, and he'll die instantly from that. Okay, but yeah, so we are properly equipped to go around here with our shirt, and we don't have to worry about the uh, the food effects because those will run out after several minutes. So it can be kind of stressful to have to run through an area and worry about time and stuff like that. I'm going to take this door and place it next to the other one so we can jump across that bridge there. That's one way to go over towards the shrine. I want to show the other way because I think it's pretty interesting as well and we can get some good loot here. There's a nice secret that I missed originally that is over towards that waterfall, as is the way with Zelda. If, you, if there's a waterfall, you want to check it out because there's probably a secret around it for you to see. Ooh, and these guys... You gotta watch out. So these are, these are white chews, white choo choos rather, and they will have a freeze effect. So I wanna make sure we're nowhere near them when they ooh, set that off. There's some white choo choo jelly that we can grab, just like the red choo choo jelly we had before. But yeah, make sure you're not close to them when they explode, or you will get frozen, and that is not good. But uh, the white choo choo jelly, just like all the monster parts, is gonna be very useful later on. So. Try to save it up. If you need to make some of it, just like putting the normal choo-choo jelly, the blue choo-choo jelly next to a fire to make it red, you can put this stuff into some frozen water and, uh, or, you know, put the blue into the frozen water to get more of the white. But I don't recommend it here because this water is very fast. If you get into it on accident, you take damage very quickly and can freeze to death. So kind of treacherous to do, but I'll show you a better spot to get all of your white choo-choo jelly as much as you need. Ooh, jeez. We almost got frozen there. We gotta take this guy out before he... Ooh, jeez. Yep. We're good, we're good. <laughs> Weapons breaking. Lots of madness going on. Needed a breather, breather there in the menu. And, ooh, I accidentally smacked it, and that is what happens when you freeze. You're very vulnerable. But you can use that on your enemies and do the same to them. So don't be afraid to throw down some choo-choo jelly and uh, hit it with an arrow from a distance to get your enemies in the same way they try to get you. Okay, we got a bunch of keys around here. Some of them are gonna be icy keys. If you're not careful, they can also freeze you. So the enemy's kind of a step up in this area compared to the rest of the peninsula. So this way, it, most likely if you went from the Temple of Time to go up to the mountains, you would see this spot. And there's more uh, bokoblins over near this gate and you can get some more peppers that way. So they really try to prepare you, even if you don't have the doublet. There's ways to stay warm. You can just hold a torch, or you can eat those spicy pepper-based dishes. Lots of wood here, which is going to help later as well. And there is a coric leaf. I've got one already, luckily, but they give you plenty of chances to get one before we go board that raft. And there was something in there, I think, but I launched it. That's the, the problem. There it is, a steak. That's the problem with using bombs to blow stuff up, is you risk your contents of your chest just flying off in every direction. So there's a raft out there. A nice throwback to the original Legend of Zelda. It's nice to see the raft return. And we can chop down some trees here to get a nice bridge going. So let's make like the uh, the old man suggested and chop some trees to make a bridge. Only this time it's in the water. So there we go and we can follow that. If you're ever near water you might want to check. There's one. Use Magnesis because often you'll find some chests just floating around there. Peace only take one good hit to take down, so they're not too tough, but just be careful of the icy ones. So there should be, yep, I saw it. There's a chest here and I can just pull it right out of the water and get some goodies while those logs float down there. There we go. More ore for more rupees because we're still broke at this point. We're gonna need more rupees later, but I got some extra ore from the, the rock or the stone talus last time, so that's gonna help. Okay, ooh, this is kinda, kinda tough here. 
See if I can jump this and get on the, ooh, the big log and maybe we'll make it over. The little ones are not very fun to walk on. And like I mentioned, walk, falling in this water, even for a second, is gonna do a ton of damage. Okay, we made it. And I've got my coric leaf, so let's swap to that. Oops, don't want bombs out here. I don't wanna blow myself up while we're trying to raft around. So the coric leaf is a, uh, is a weapon, but it only does one damage, but it also, has a nice gust to it, and it's like nice that the uh, the item from the Wind Waker returns and we use it on a boat, which is pretty cool. You can even try to throw it, and instead of throwing it, it can do a big gust of wind, and you can you know charge it up to do a huge gust like that. I can beach my raft so we can get back to it. Might even extinguish these guys a little bit or blow them back because they're pretty light. I'm gonna hit them with an arrow though because I don't want to take my chances and get frozen again after last time. Okay, so this is the secret that I was talking about. There is the side area behind the waterfall, a cave with some good stuff, including, ooh, another broadsword. Let's see what else we got. Metal chests, of course, have better stuff in them typically. This is a sloppy, crafted, spiked boko bow, but it should do better damage than any of the other bows that we have right now. Yeah, even our traveler's bows are no match for this thing. There we go. What else we got? Yeah, lots of goodies here, so definitely worth going behind the waterfall. Some fire arrows, and one more for us. There we are, all right, yeah. Arrows, I'm always glad to have them. Okay, so let's keep on the path towards the shrine. But I wanted to show, you know, there's alternate ways to get through this area, alternate paths you can take. There goes our raft, <laughs> that's okay though. We don't really need it here. We're on the right shore that will uh, take us up to the shrine. I just got to be careful because there are going to be enemies about that I got to deal with. So I'm uh, going to do my best to make it through here and not get frozen anymore. Collect as much of this chew jelly as I can get. Okay. Yeah, we might see some icy keys here. We'll see. It's getting getting towards morning, so it shouldn't be as scary. We won't see as many stall bokoblin as we did the night before here. Go, oh, he's ready to be hit. Yeah, all right. You might not want to waste your good weapons on choo-choos because they don't take many hits. You just, you know, got to be careful with the elemental versions because they have those added effects. So long, Mr. Raft. Thank you for the ride. He's going to head towards the waterfall, which you don't want to go off of either. That's a big, big waterfall. There's an ice keys. Okay. Let me see if I can get this guy before he gets too close. Ooh, got stuck there. All right. My one bow is almost done. An ice key swing. So yeah, there's all these different versions of the enemies in this game with different elements and stuff. So you want to get the parts from all of them. So here we are. We're up in the snowy mountains. The, uh, the snow coverage is kind of thick, so you won't run as fast. And that is kind of tough if you're trying to get away from enemies, but we'll have a way to get around here a lot faster on the way down that you guys will see in just a second. <laughs> the uh, the screams of the keys sometimes sound like little kids sh shrieking or something. I don't know, there's a weird sound to it that is <laughs> kind of scary but funny. So you guys will you'll hear that, I'm sure. Ooh, somebody's trying to kill us with some snowballs, but that is not gonna work. Ooh, hello, how you guys doing? No weapons? No problem. I'm gonna take you out. Oh, he's gonna throw a barrel at me. <laughs> That's not gonna work, but, oh, okay. Uh, not that one. Oh my gosh, I'm on fire. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me try to get some of this stuff before it burns up. I can't believe he killed his friends and himself trying to throw explosive barrels at me. But at least he didn't destroy the stake. There we go. All right. And I think that's all of them. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's burning down the hill, but we are moving on because the next shrine is just up here. And there's another frozen body of water, but this one is not flowing. So this is a great place to throw your choo-choo jelly in if you want to get white choo-choo jelly because it won't float away. This is the Kunamut Shrine. And there's a chest down there that we can't get yet. But like the other shrines, it is going to be easy to get once we have the rune that we unlock here. And I think this is my favorite of the Sheikah Slate runes because bombs, you know, they're a known thing. We've used them in other Zelda games. They definitely have some nice improvements in this one, but I played a ton of Zelda games with bombs, so it's not exactly like new and exciting that much compared to Magnesis, which is really cool. I use that one a lot and 
You can even pick up your weapons and different stuff and throw them around in battle, so these runes are, uh, are useful in combat, not just in puzzles. But this one, I think this one is uh, really clever and definitely is going to save Link's butt a bunch of times throughout the adventure. To you who sets foot in this shrine, I am Kanamut. In the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. This is the Cryonis trial, and we're going to be doing some cool stuff with water in just a second here. But yeah, the runes, all of them, they're, uh, they're one of the only things that you really need in the game to get around and, and do a lot of the puzzles, but they're used throughout, and I, that's been a pet peeve of mine with earlier Zeldas. Some, some items and things like the spinner and Twilight Princess, they get used a little bit, and they're fun to use, but they don't get used often enough, and I really like how the runes are very useful the entire adventure. This is Cryonis. Create a pillar of ice from a water surface. Builds ice pillars that are very stable. These pillars can be used as stepping stones or as obstacles. Use Cryonis on an ice pillar to break it. And now that it's extracted, we can head through the trial. So this one, when we have it selected, of course, we can, uh, we can hit the rune button and any body of water, we can hit A and create this pillar. And although it's made of ice, it's actually not slippery. We can climb on it, and this is a great way to, you know, save yourself from getting drowned if you're at the shore of water. You can make a, uh, a bunch of these pillars and kind of use them as stepping stones to get through the water, and if you want to get rid of them, you just go over them and hit A when you're using the rune. So there you go. But that is not the limit of their use. You can lift stuff up, which is cool, and you can use them as a way to block damage from these guardian scouts here. Let's see if we can get another reflected shot on this guy. But yeah, if you want to avoid them... Oh! He ran away! Ah, shoot me in the back, why don't you? He, uh, he ran away and I lost the target on him. Let me grab an acorn here and a couple apples. We should be good. I love how Link just <laughs> scarfs down stuff. There we go. We didn't even need to... <laughs> I was going to reflect his beam back at him to get some more practice, but we didn't need to bother. Just one slash from our new broadsword. So the uh, the Cryonis Ice Pillars, we only get a couple of them, and we can do three at a time before you start erasing the other ones, so keep that in mind if you're making a bunch. And there we go. We can lift up one side of that. There is the end of the shrine right here, but if you look, you know, right before the end, we see there is a bonus chest that I don't want to miss, so let's jump up and see what our secret treat is. Now, there is a way that I didn't realize. Ooh, Traveler Spear, so that's not very strong, just like the, the Boko Spear, but at the same time, you know, if you want to hit somebody with a shield, it's a great way to do it. I'm going to drop my Cork Leaf, because we're not going to need that anytime soon and pick this up here. But the uh, the shrines, I didn't realize till uh, playing the game a little bit that if you go on your map screen, you'll see next to the shrine name, you see that little chest there? That tells me I have gotten all of the chests in a shrine, and that is extremely helpful because otherwise you would just be running around wondering if you missed any of the really good bonus chests that you find in some of the, the later shrines and everything. So it is nice to know but it does not keep track of if you open a chest and you don't want what's in there, you should probably take it out and drop it because it'll say you haven't found all the chests. So that is a you know, tip for later on. Your resourcefulness in overcoming this trial speaks to the promise of a hero. In the name of Goddess Hylia, I bestow upon you the spirit orb. So we've got our third. One more, and we can do something good with them. These guys are pretty creepy. <laughs> It does, yeah, it just really reminds me, especially this one because of all the ice, but it reminds me of finding some type of frozen mountain climber and they've been preserved for forever or something. May the goddess smile upon you. He he he. I'll be in your dreams, Link. <laughs> he just wakes up. He's like, oh, all the monks, the monks that I've awakened and killed un unintentionally are haunting my nightmares. Okay. So there we go. We only have one more shrine, and we're going to go hit that one up, because I mentioned it's pretty easy to get to from up on the mountain, and now it is morning, because we spent some time doing some puzzles. Okay, and one way to get down here, let's do this. So we do have Cryonis. I don't want to forget that we 
want to get this chest over here before we move on. Without the paraglider, it's a little tough to get to these without freezing yourself in this water. You want to make them pretty close together or you could fall in. But there we go. I might actually erase my first one to get myself another stepping stone. There we go. Don't knock that off, Link. The chest sliding around. But we got some opal, which is more valuable than amber, so got some more rupees for that. And I almost forgot I got rid of my first one. Ah, Link, grab on, buddy. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Man, we're having some close calls in this episode. And uh, I think I'll get rid of my last baked mushroom here, or baked uh, apple. Got so many mushrooms too, though. There we go. All right. That is why, at least I illustrated to you guys why you don't want to go into the frozen water. And uh, we got enough shields here. Let's do some cool stuff. I'm going to do a little bit of... Oops. I want to target. If you tar you know, target to have your shield, you hit your jump button and then hit A right after, you can shield surf. And it does use up a bunch of durability, especially when you're on a rock. But if you find the right spots to do it, you can go for quite a while in the rain and on the snow. And uh, I'll show you some sweet tricks here in just a second. <laughs> Gonna make sure we're not missing much, but we'll surf down from the top of Mount Hylia. Which is, it's cool to see, yeah, it's one of the higher mountains, but if you look off in the distance, Death Mountain is definitely the highest peak. There's also Mount Lanayru, which I think we can see back there. Might be a little tough. There's a lot of really high peaks in this world. And uh, we can even see something foreboding in the distance that we'll have to learn about when the story kicks in, which actually is going to be very soon. So uh, if you're interested in story stuff, you don't have to wait too much longer to get that. Okay, going to be careful. And I think we can run up this enough to jump. There we are. So yeah, if you did not get the warm doublet, and you make your way all the way up here just on food or carrying a torch or what have you, or just eating a ton of stuff as you freeze to death. The old man is up here. Oh, ho, ho. ah, I enjoy gazing out to the world from here. B breathtaking view. Uh, this may be the best place to get a full view of the entire plateau. Did you know about the scope on your Sheikah slate? Look through it and you can stick a pin anywhere you'd like to mark on the map. So he's teaching us about that. The pins on your map serve as reference points for your travels. Just stick a pin anywhere you're interested in. How do you know that? Oh, ho, ho. Just a few tricks I picked up after many, many years in the wild. You may take my advice or leave it. I've been stalking you. Go ahead and take a look if you feel inclined to do so. So if you didn't have the doublet, he would give it to you when you get up here. And I think... There, there we go. Got some amber. I can't remember if there's a... Uh, nope. <laughs> Sometimes there's, uh, there's corks in places like this, so I wanted to make sure I didn't miss one. All right, so yeah, we can get a really nice view of the plateau here. We're headed towards the other end, though. You can see that beacon on my map, the, uh, the pin. So let's jump down and be careful. Whoa! I'm going to do a trick. 1080. <laughs> if you hit Y, you can do a 1080 spin. I almost died from that, and I ran into a wall, but I had to, had to do it just to crush that sweet powder. Okay, I'm gonna use a stick. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll take a break from wearing down my shield. Okay, I'm keeping my eyes open if we can find any more of the, uh, the little Korok puzzles around here, because I know there's a couple more that we might be missing. If you wanna jump off on your paraglider, there is something really cool over in that forest, the Taobab forest, and uh, it might be worth going to, maybe not if you have only a little bit of stamina, but at the same time, I think it's uh, something cool to check out. Look at that guy there, he's got a cool weapon. All right, before we, uh, we waste too much time here, I'm going to head towards my marker, because if we climb down a bit towards the edge here, we will make our way into the, uh, the last shrine and take on the last trial. I'm trying to make sure that... One Bokoblin doesn't see me, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of rocks here we could drop. I wonder if there's a unsuspecting Bokoblin or two. That sound is kind of sad, honestly. Launching a, or, you know, dropping a rock on their head. And possibly hitting an explosive barrel as well. Maybe we'll do that just to, just to blow that whole thing up. <laughs> Since it's all set up so neatly for us. Let me make sure I uh, get another bow and switch to a normal arrow so I don't actually 
set anything else on fire. Okay. So there we go. There is, uh, I'm trying to see if we can find it, but there's a little stone ring that we should look out for, and some, some stuff that is, uh, definitely meant to let you know that you're supposed to interact with it. Ooh, there's a chest down here. Luckily it didn't explode. <laughs> the chests are pretty resilient. I don't think they can break, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna go to the shrine, because, yeah, my main focus here is completing the other trials so that we can get our paraglider. Then it's a lot easier to explore, because you don't have to worry about accidentally falling and not being able to glide to safety. So let's climb down. Gotta be very careful with this. Ooh, there's something waiting for me over here. Now, climbing up actually uses more stamina, if you look. It, it kind of goes down faster when you climb up. It's not too noticeable, but it's definitely easier to climb down for longer periods and not accidentally fall. So we should be safe. We'll get a rest here on this platform. I wanna grab this, because that is gonna be helpful in this shrine. It's an iron sledgehammer, so pretty good power. Not quite as good as my sword, but it's also a double-handed weapon that we can spin around. I'm gonna drop my torch. We got a couple spears I should probably be using up as well, but the torch isn't gonna be too useful right now. I don't think we need to light anything else on fire. And we are warm and fuzzy with our new shirt. Okay, so let's go into the Oa Daim Shrine and get that last spirit orb so we can see what the reward is. But also, I'm sure a lot of you guys want to see the last of the main runes here. There still are two more outside of this one that I haven't shown you guys. One is technically unlocked already, but I want to do a special episode to show that because it's a bit of a bonus rune. But there's another one we'll get later on as well. Now, the uh, the rune here, I, I feel like it is useful, and I should probably be using it more than I do. And you can upgrade runes to actually make them more useful later on, but this one is, uh, I don't know, it, it's really cool. It's definitely one that is interesting to look at and uh, see the effects of, but I don't know. We'll let you guys decide. To you, sets foot in the shrine, I am Oedaim. In the name of the goddess, highly I offer this trial. So let's get the stasis rune for the stasis trial, of course. And this one, yeah, this is something you see a lot in, uh, or talked about at least. Sheikah Slate Authenticated Distilling Rune. It's, uh, it's definitely one that is probably the most entertaining to watch of the, of the runes, but maybe not the most useful in a lot of situations, and it does require you to use some durability on your weapons, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is fun. This is stasis. Stop the flow of time for an object. Stops an object in time while storing its kinetic energy. The stored energy will act upon the object when the flow of time resumes. Making good use of the stored energy can move even the largest of objects. And the rune's extracted. So yeah, because you have to... It's good for freezing stuff, of course. You stop it in time, as you'll see here with this gear. You just go over anything that's yellow, and it will turn green when you can uh, stop the, the time there. And you can also go over it and resume it if you want to get it to recharge a little faster. But the other use of it is that if you manage to uh, stop something that you want to move, there's a lot of objects that don't necessarily have to be moving that you can stop, and then you can hit it a bunch of times and put all this force into it, causing it to be launched into, uh, ooh, probably could have made this if I had went for it. Ooh, we did make it. Okay, good. <laughs> Almost got crushed by that Indiana Jones style. There we go. Traveler's shield. Ooh, okay, let me, let me see if we can drop off one of these, because this is the iconic shield that you see in a lot of the artwork, and we gotta have it. Plus, a wooden shield is useful for stealing arrows, so there we go. It does look cool as well. Let's, uh, let's swap to it here so you guys can get it, a look at it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice looking shield. It's got a, a cool pattern on it. But anyways, uh, so yeah, the, the stasis rune, if you have something that you want to freeze, that you're allowed to freeze, you know, certain objects are freezable, ooh, then, uh, <laughs> get the double, double the hammer here, then you can hit it a bunch of times, and I might as well, I know this traveler's spear was a special thing that we got. You can even see which, which items are full durability, they twinkle compared to ones we've used already. Let me just, yeah, we don't need the axe anymore. We got one already that's not broken at all, so we'll get this, and then now, once this is frozen, 
I can, oop, wrong weapon. I can take out one of my sledgehammers and maybe we'll actually charge up and hit this thing. When it hits red, it is max. Look out, there it goes. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Monk. Almost hit you there. All right, I didn't have to hit it that much, but I wanted to show you guys. You can hit it and aim it in whatever direction you're hitting towards and it will blast off. So it is fun to use, like I said. It's just one of those things where you might eat through your weapons and sometimes it takes a, a bit to get the right finesse to hit it where you might need to in future trials and things. All right, and our last spirit orb is here, which means we are done. We have completed the contract with the old man. We, we did what he asked. We got all four of the treasures and uh, we can turn them in for a sweet paraglider, which I feel bad. You know, he's an old man. It seems like it would help him get around to have these paraglider, you know, spots that he could jump off of and he wouldn't have to walk all the way. But, I don't know, we might learn why he might not need it in just a second. So if you don't want story spoilers, you know, we're gonna go through the whole game and you'll get to see the main story and everything. In uh, And I'll try to do it in the best order possible so you get to see a bunch of the events in the way that makes sense the most, but this is the time for some story stuff to, to come in, so there's a little bit of a warning for you. Oh, where is he? One last time before he gives me that thing, <laughs> he glides in. With this, you have now acquired all of the spirit ores from the shrines on this plateau. Oh, ho, ho, extraordinary. That means it is finally time. Link, it is finally time for me to tell you everything. But first. Oh? going on he's getting real pensive and uh introspective <laughs> imagine an x on your map with the four shrines as the endpoints find the spot where those lines intersect i shall wait for you there all right if you say so do you understand where two lines connecting the shrines would cross there i will be waiting Ooh. there he goes he has some sort of weird teleporting power so the intersection of the shrines, so if you kind of follow the the shrine, like the lines from them, they all lead to the Temple of Time. So that is where we're going to go. And, you know, like I mentioned, I didn't miss a few corks. There's a couple up on this mountain we could get. But we got a decent amount of seeds already, so I think we'll be okay. One last thing that we can do on the way to the Temple of Time, as we uh, we'll pop into the Shrine of Resurrection here, there is something I didn't want to forget. I saw it reminded me in the comments. There was that spot near where we dove into the water and found our first cork that could be blasted open. And instead of wasting a bomb arrow, I've got my bombs now that I can use to blow that up. So let's go get that treasure on our way out of here. And I don't think it has happened yet, but if you uh, go back to where you, we were sleeping and we investigate. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little bit, but there is a secret there. Nothing too big, but <laughs> but yeah, if you go back there, there's uh, an examine prompt that we'll get later. Okay, so let me grab a sword or something here, so we're not running around with a sledgehammer if we get into any fights, and we'll head out of here. But yeah, the stasis rune, I didn't mean to, uh, to knock it or anything. It's just not is you know, can't use it on a ton of stuff necessarily, there's only, you know, there's a boulder there, and uh, until later, it doesn't have as much usefulness, but it is fun to use, for sure. It's just, uh, it takes a little bit of practice and fin finesse, and can eat through your weapons if you don't have a bunch of sledgehammers. Okay, so it's getting a little gloomy here, but we're almost to the Temple of Time. There it is, there's those rocks. The one cork is just hanging out there. Let's see if I can grab some bass on the way through. Give me that bass. All right. We get, we're going to need <laughs> as much food as possible because I did eat through a lot fighting all the enemies here. And I didn't get the cool club from the, uh, the goblin from on the mountain, but that's all right. We don't necessarily need it. We'll have more chances to get more stuff later. Now, this is where this will be helpful. I don't have to swim across this water. I can use this as a platform and then switch to my other rune. So a lot of these you're going to be using in uh, conjunction with each other to get some cool effects. And there we go. We found the chest, and we're gonna finish up by heading to the Temple of Time. Nice opal. Get me plenty of rupees by the time we, uh, we've we reached the first town, hopefully. And we're gonna need some even before then. So let's head to the Temple of Time, 
the old man is supposed to meet us here. But over on that, there's the other entrance that we went by. If you did want to, you know, take that route and get some peppers that way. Let me see if I can just bust through a window here. Yeah. And look! Mysteriously, the goddess statue that we prayed at that didn't have any effect or react at all is, uh, is glowing. Let's go and see what this is all about. Hello. Don't hurt me. <laughs> we just get smited by the god. No. I like the little ones. They're really cute, those tiny statues. You who have conquered the shrines and claimed their spirit orbs, I can offer you great power. It appears you have claimed four spirit orbs. In exchange for four spirit orbs, I will amplify your being. So tell me what it is that you desire. So the spirit orbs are kind of like heart pieces, but you can use them for a heart container or a stamina vessel. Now, hearts, obviously very useful early on, and stamina is as well, though. I'm going to go with stamina. You wish to expand your stamina wheel? Yes. Okay, I shall grant you the power you seek. Now, either way, you can't really go wrong, because it's useful, and there are elixirs and foods that will give you temporary hearts or give you temporary stamina, so don't stress about this too much. We did get a stamina vessel. The size of your stamina wheel has been increased, allowing you to perform more actions before getting tired. And I mentioned this before, but there's a way to swap these around, so try not to stress if you're... This is a big decision, in a way, but not really, because you can go back on it. Go and bring peace to Hyrule. Okay, there we go. We, we used our reward, <laughs> our treasure. It was supposed to be for the old man, and he's a little mad about it. No. <laughs> oh, the blessing of the goddess has made you that much more resilient, I see. Hmm. Here I am. Get up here, quickly. Okay, yeah, he didn't care about that treasure. That was more of a test to see if we were ready for what he has to offer and what he has to tell us. So there was, uh, you know, some hints there that we saw already, but we are getting into story territory here. This is going to be our first big cutscene. Now, you don't, yeah, the stamina, I like having more stamina so I can jump up cliffs faster. Right now, we kind of, to get up here, we're going to need to use most of our stamina to uh, climb our way up. But yeah, the, uh, the extra stamina is definitely helpful, especially if we're trying to get around the world, and I want to do that quickly for you guys, so you're not waiting for me to climb all the, all the cliffs and whatnot. But there we go. All right. Got to be a little ca careful here. The Temple of Time has seen better days in this world. But here we are. If we want to, uh, before we get into that real quick, <laughs> hold on, old man. I got a mission to climb all the way up here. This is another good vantage point that I enjoy to uh, to get up here and look around. But there's something hidden at the very top. Any place that you want to go that is, you know, tough to get to is most likely worth doing it, even just for the view. But I'm going to get all the way up here. There's a glowy mountain in the distance that has something cool, and I can't talk about it yet. But, uh, you know... You guys will see in due time. There we go. All right. We got another cork seed. So we got we got seven of those. That's pretty good. That'll be useful here soon. And we can look around. Reminds me of Mario 64 kind of readjusting on here and checking out the scenery. The sun is going down, though. So let's go talk to the old man before he has to head to bed. And ooh, I'm careful here. Grab on. No, I didn't mean to jump off. Okay, we're good. <laughs> if you accidentally push back and jump when you're climbing, you will do a backwards jump off of something. It's also kind of a Mario thing, but uh, but there we go. And here he is. I'm going to let him speak. <laughs> well done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was the last leader of Hyrule, a kingdom which no longer exists. <laughs> Surprise, King Rome, the last king of Hyrule. A lot of people figured this out long before the game came out. The Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, 
I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the divine beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the divine beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. from deep below Hyrule Castle, seized control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turned them against us. The Champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight, gravely wounded, collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter. My dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. 
but I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shika slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. All right, heavy stuff. <laughs> Lots of responsibility. Go on. Here is the paraglider, just as I promised. And the old man was the king. I feel bad, you know, he, uh, he had a bad back, but he was actually dead the whole time. He had a really bad back. <laughs> It's a little sad that, you know, he's got to he's got to resume his true form and leave. But this is his unfinished business. Helping Link, the paraglider, an item that you receive from the king on the Great Plateau. It allows you to sail through the sky. Press B while you're in the air to use it. So that is going to help us escape the plateau and start our adventure proper. With that, you should be able to safely fly off the cliff surrounding this area. And I think that's it. <laughs> I've told you everything I can. It's a lot, but, you know, you can do it. Link, you must save Hyrule. And there he goes. Yeah, it's a little weird going around here and not seeing the old man anymore after this, but we have our quest. We need to seek out Impa in Kakariko Village. Ooh, we got a soldier's bow here that is going to be quite a bit more powerful. And then we also have, you know, the quest to destroy Ganon is our main one, so it just gives you that really quickly. If we go on our map... You can zoom out and see that is where we need to head. So we could jump off in that direction. We're going to do one last thing here. If I can find the forest that the cabin was in right around here. There it is. Let's place a, a pin there so I can head towards it. I'm going to try to glide off in that direction because there is one final little easter egg i want to show you guys before we leave the plateau there's still you know corks and chests and things around here to discover but it's high time we got off of this big old slab and get on our way so next time we are going to be getting a horse at long last and trotting off towards adventure but i also have some other things i want to do I, th I think i'm going to do a bonus episode to show you guys all the amiibo rewards or at least you know one round of them because there's a lot of stuff you can get from those guys and uh also have a very special guest returning from an old game thanks to an amiibo okay but last i want to show you guys this so this was where he talked about his spicy fish and seafood fry but now it's updated so this is the old man's diary link Bit by bit, you may come to realize who I am. I am sorry for not revealing my true identity to you sooner. The truth is, after you awoke from your long slumber of restoration, I did not know how to tell you all there was to say. Perhaps deceiving you was not the right thing to do. Still, you must admit I put on a great performance. But all joking aside, what I ask of you is of the utmost importance, dear hero. I implore you with all my heart, defeat Calamity Ganon and save my precious daughter Zelda. I understand this is no simple task uh, I am asking of you, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can do it. I do not doubt for a moment. I see courage in your eyes, just as you did. I did 100 years ago. I believe in you, Link. Okay, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. We are going to teleport to the tower and use that as a jumping off point next episode when we glide down and escape into Hyrule. I'm excited. To really begin the adventure with you guys thanks again maybe subscribe if you haven't and we are out of here on the next episode of the legend of zelda breath of the wild goodbye <laughs>